All right, Israel. Shalom, shalom to you all. Greetings to you all that be scattered abroad. Beloved of Yah, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace to you all. Hallelujah. Um, uh, thank you all for um, your feedback. Hallelujah. I see the sound is coming in good. And uh, hallelujah. We thank the Father for that. Glory to the King. Saints, um, uh, as you all know, I'm your host for the evening, Elder Donnie, uh, for those who don't know. And uh, I, I thank you all for joining me this uh, this evening and honoring me. And because uh, saints, you could have been anywhere, uh, anywhere in the world that you wanted to be, but you chose to be here. And I'm honored. And uh, blessings to you all. Glory to the King. I, I pray that something said will bless your hearts on this evening. And um, it's always good to, to fellowship. It's always good to uh, be uh, amongst brethren. And uh, I'm grateful for it. I truly am. And uh, as always, saints, you know, I, I always like to give honor where honor is due. And first of all, I give honor to the Most High Yah, uh, the creator of this entire universe. Um, I'm just so grateful for him and, and I give him all the praise. And um, just being a man of his word, you know, and um, just uh, restoring back unto us, you know, our rich, rich heritage through the law and, and the covenant in which he made unto our forefathers. So I'm grateful for that. And Yahweh gets all the praise, honor, and the glory. Hallelujah. Also to our, our pastor and shepherd, uh, Pastor Charles Dow, um, blessings to you and, um, and your house. And uh, we thank you for your labor. Grateful for it. I, and I'm, I'm thankful. Um, and I just continue to pray that Yahweh gives you the utterance to preach and teach uh, his words of truth unto his people. And that everything your hands touch will be, you, uh, will be blessed. Hallelujah. Also to all the pastors associated with Straight Word Truth. Blessings to you and your houses as well. And all the elders uh, that are associated with the Straight Word Truth. Blessings to you uh, as well as teacher. Teacher McKnight. And so, uh, glory to the King and, and to you, saints of the Most High Yah. Once again, it is an honor uh, to be before you, um, to serve you. And uh, I don't even have to ask. I already know, you know, that you're blessed. Hallelujah. Because you are striving uh, to enter in at the straight gate. And we know that there is no peace, said Yahweh, unto the wicked. Uh, so, hallelujah. I already know that you are blessed. And you should be encouraged as well um, for the, the 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 true bread, the the bread of life, you know that that you are fed, and all of the words, uh, the eternal words of truth that you hear on a weekly basis. Hallelujah! If 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 anybody, I know that you are are definitely well fed. Glory to the King. But you know what, saints? Uh, being being here and and associated with this uh, ministry, we truly uh, have a lot to thank the Father for. You know, it's no small thing um, when we hear of uh, a brother or a sister being healed. It's no small thing, and we give y'all the praise for that. Um, we hear of, and we ourselves participate in it and uh, casting out of devils. You know. Because that's no small thing, especially in this day and time that we live in. And there are many uh, people out there who claim to be Israel and who claim to be a part of this heritage, of this rich heritage. But yet we don't see the workings of, of, of the Master, of Yeshua. We don't see Him working in them, in their lives. You know, we see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we see, uh, and this is nothing to us, you know, uh, of, of demons being cast out of people. You know, I mean, that, you know, we, we do it on a, on a constant basis. And the healing, you know, we don't run to the hospital every time, you know, uh, there's an issue with us or, or, or something uh, goes wrong. You know, we trust in, in the Father. And I just want to continue to do so, you know. And um, but we definitely are a blessed people. This ministry is definitely blessed. And um, we thank God for it. Glory, glory, glory. Um. You know, I tell you my 
just over the few over the years that I've been in in this uh, in this truth and, and with this ministry, I've witnessed many cases of, of of healing. You know, I've even participated in it. But uh, it's just it's just rich. I mean, and it's it's how can we say that we have the the, the creator of the universe? You know, Yahweh Elohim, and then and then we don't have anything to prove it. No signs to follow. It's just not right. Think about it, uh, saints. Our ancients, upon coming out of Egypt, out of Mizraim, you know, the Father brought them out with a mighty hand. You know, and the and the nations that were around, they heard, you know, the fame of Yahweh had went abroad. It spread abroad quickly. They heard what uh, the Father did, you know, to 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 Pharaoh and his his army, and and to that that whole region, and the people feared. Israel, it really did, and we see different accounts of of how, you know, even Rahab, the harlot, she even said it, that, uh, you know, this land was was already given into your hands because of the, you know, the, the father, because of all that he did, you know, to the nations, and 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 we heard about all of these things, and the people were fearful. They were literally fearful of Israel. And that's who we are, uh, Israel. We are the descendants of the of, of our ancients, and we are uh, Yahweh's chosen. He chose us, which were the fewest people on the earth. You know, saints, we need to uh, embrace our heritage, embrace who we are as a people, and um, you know, act like it. Really, truly, act like it. Um, you know, we don't have to walk around like the tail uh, anymore, any longer. You know, we're not in uh, lies and in deception and, and, and wickedness. We're not practicing, you know, sin on a daily basis. We shouldn't be. So we should be walking with our heads up, um, looking for the return of our, our, our master, using this time wisely, purging ourselves. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. But I... I, I um, once again, uh, I'm glad you all were able to join me this evening. You know, Saints, I I do this and I really try to uh you know do it from the from my heart and, and to the Father and unto his people at service. And um you know, I'm not trying to promote myself or, or, or create any name for myself, but it's to edify uh Yahweh's sheep. You know, because as as time progress, as we go further and further in um uh, in this world and in this walk, it's just we need to be edified. We need to be strengthened. We need it. We need the fellowship. Uh, we, we really do because it's just getting rough. It's really getting rough out there. And I don't need to tell y'all. Y'all can see it. You know, you, de you guys definitely can see it. Hallelujah. Bless you, Brother Mitchell. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. And so um, that's just my prayer. I just pray that something said can be uplifting unto you. And um, because, man, you know, saints, I... You never know what uh, you can do that can, that will strengthen uh, your brother or your sister. It might be the smallest thing. You, n you just never know. And so that's why it's so important, uh, saints, that we we try to be attentive uh, one to another. We try to get up out of ourselves and focus and see what, what, what how can I be of service to someone else. You know, it was something just as simple as this. I'll just use this as an example. It's very simple, and it, it just happened just the other day. But it just shows me the level and the mind. All right, a uh, sister was uh, wanting to show me something, and we had to sit at the computer. And she was like, "Well, come, come over here. I'll, I'll uh, you sit in this nice chair. I'll sit in this chair over here." And I look, and I was like, "Wow, you know what I mean?" And it's everything, and it, it's not just that. I mean, it goes deeper than that. You know, that was just a small thing, but it just showed. You know, you know. Um, the level of, of of commitment, devotion that our, our uh, you know the saints the straight way that they have, and they really really try to cater to others, um, and they, and it's their life, their life, you know, and and it's it's just good to see stuff like that. But as I was saying, you never know what um, you can do or, or say that may encourage or strengthen your brethren, and so just just be mindful of that, saints. But um. I'm blessed. I'm thankful. I love you all, my true family, Israel, those who are really, truly striving 
Glory to the King. Because there are many out there that say that they are Israel. But when you look at their lives and you look at their actions and the functions, you know, these people don't um, exemplify that of a true, true Israelite. Not one that's trying and what, not one that's striving. Too many uh, people are puffed up these days. Too puffed up. You know, very, very haughty. And so, saints, we uh, should strive for uh, humility, strive for perfection, even the more so. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. But, um, you know, saints, if you just observe and see what's going on out in the world, and um, you, you know that this nation, you know, as well as this world, is, is in a literal state of chaos. And you know, saints, I, I, I talk about this a lot. You know, you got to realize this stuff, I'm speaking to you what's, what's on my heart. You know, I can wake up sometimes early in the morning, 2 o'clock, 2 1 o'clock a.m., and, and this stuff is just on my mind, on my heart, you know, I'm, and I'm thinking about the saints, and um, I can't escape it. So I, I bring to you, you know, and then Pastor is constantly preaching on these things. He's constantly keeping us aware. You, you know what? There are many people that that don't know, don't have a clue as to what's happening. They don't want to know. They are too busy uh, fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. I mean, they are too busy doing their own thing, you know. And so, you know, we hear about this stuff all the time. We we are briefed on it. We are, you know, educated on it. And um, so, of course, you know, it's going to come up often. But to us, it's no secret, you know, what's going on, the chaos you know, out, out in the world. And, um, you know, if you've been keeping up the news, even just, just lo uh, as of lately, um, locally as well as abroad, you know, um, and you would agree that we are living in some perilous times. And, you know, we know that it's, it's going to get worse. And it, it is getting worse. Um, you know it's bad when uh, you hear heathen. I heard a reporter you know, he said he was speaking on uh, different issues that were going on, and he said, you know, we're living in some. Uh, oh, how did he say it? He said, no, it's getting. It, 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 there's going to be a time that's, that's coming. Speaking about this nation, in which we've never seen before, and, and it's going to be real rough. You know, even the heathen can see it coming. You know, some of them, at least. But um, you know, we see the economy. It's in a state of, of, of turmoil. Shoot, just as Pastor, uh, you know, he's been telling us for years now. This shoot, it's been some years about the U.S. printing money out of thin air, and 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 no doubt they are doing it. But just uh, as of lately, of uh, China, you know, which is one of the top foreign holders of, of U.S. Treasury bonds, you know, planning to you know selling the debt. And you know what? They um. Pastor just did a, a video too. I didn't get a chance to check it out the the entire video, but he just did a video, so it, it, it's it's getting worse real quickly um, about that. So, but but, but um, just just the whole makeup of you know our economy is shaky. It really is, um, especially the dollar. You know, there's not much hope left in that. I mean, just for example, have you honestly, seriously took a note of the prices? I know Pastor told us some years back to when you go grocery shopping, when you go to, uh, you know, your local supermarket, check out the prices. You know, you, you take time and you take note of the price at that particular time when you're there and then go back a few months later and compare the prices. And you'll see the difference. But, you know, I've been noticing that not only have you know the prices been inching up, I've noticed the smaller quantity that you get for the money. You know, it's less and less. I mean, it, it's just horrible, and it's it's only getting worse. <clears throat> it's only getting worse. And I, now I'm not trying to be uh, pessimistic here, or nothing like that. But just just being real, you know, we we are people of truth, and and truth. It, it shouldn't be no shock. To you, you know, the world they love fairy tale tales. You know, they live in it so much, 
to where, you know, um, they, they yearn to have it. I mean, as long as you're saying lies unto them, then you're speaking their language. You know, the minute you speak some truth and tell truth, then a, it's like a shock. It's a, it's a literal shock to them. But you, you are not that way, Israel. Hallelujah. And you see what's going on. And just re as of recently, too, uh, China and Russia just completed the largest ever uh, joint Navy um, exercise. You know something is brewing. I mean, and the thing about it is, too, it's, it's no secret thing. They're not trying to hide it uh, or keep it closed from, from the public. Matter of fact, um, it seems like they want it to be published and they want it to be known. And uh, Putin, Russia's uh, president, he's all over the media. You know, he's like a superstar these days. But it, it it definitely is something brewing because you know, you know, the United States as a uh, as a country does not have a good reputation in the world, and you all know this. But you know, think of all of the the terror, think of all of the wrong has been done all over this this world by the hands of the United States, and I mean, eventually, you know, um, it's it's. It, Revenge is going to uh, happen and, and take place. We don't know exactly what, but these people have a lot of hatred all across the world. And uh, we're not alike. Uh, this nation is not liked or, or very well respected. So, um, but you know, all of this is to get your minds ready and get your minds prepared and thinking um, because, you know, we never know what will take place. We just don't know. You know, but we need to be armed and ready, armed and ready mentally. Um, you know, just here in this land, and it's, it's just so sad, but, you know, we see the tension. It's rising. I mean, it's rising as we go week from week to week, day to day. I mean, it's getting stronger with this division. You know, Pastor Dow warned us about this years back on how, you know, the powers that be, they were going to, you know, put um, us against each other, you know, uh, and, and, and they're using the lines of, of, of race, color, of skin, you know, this people against that people. And, and it's, it's really getting bad because, you know, we're seeing how much hate has really been um, um, bottled up inside of people. It's starting to come out. And it's uh, it's just an ugly sight. Um, it just it really is. But you know we're seeing countless um, cases of, of people dying. You know that's some some serious serious bitterness, some serious hatred that's going on. You know when you you want to kill a person really for nothing because you know what if you ask the average person. Whether it be uh, black or white, you know, well, well, black people, they, they can justify, you know, to some extent to the fact that because of all of the years of oppression and I, and I can attest to that. I know what it's like. But, you know, you, you ask the average American, white American, racist white American, that is, uh, the reason for their hatred, the reason for their anger. And, you know, they can't even tell you why. You know, it's just sad. You know, even when I was young, I was maybe about, I don't know. I don't know, it was in the 2000, early 2000s. You know, it started to make sense to me, and and I realized that, you know, it's something is more to us as a people because we're too hated. You know, if if, if you think of something minor that, it has, that causes no threat unto you, you're not going to really deal with it. You're not really going to try to come up with ways to, to entrap it, to snare it, to keep it down because, you know, it, it doesn't matter to you, you know. But if it, you, you got to realize um, the powers that be, they know who we are, Israel. And just as Pastor mentioned on yesterday, these the, the nations, the, the, they have learned how to keep us accursed as a people. And that's their, their job, and they're, they're doing it. They're doing a good job of it. You know, you can't even tell um, folk these days who they are. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to know. But they love uh, this oppression. They love this slavery. They love this American system. They love Egypt. All right, but you know we're we're just living in some 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 very sick times, you know, where people can hate for nothing, for nothing at all. And you know what? All it's going to take, you know, saying to the Most High for them to really to look at us and 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 come down on us even harder, or put all types of traps and snares in our way. 
All it's going to take is for that idiot box, the tube, the media, to, to put it out there, to promote it. Because, see, they're not aware of the things that are going on unless they're being fed. They're being fed by that television. You know, and that's all it's going to take is for them to put, you know, to put us on blast in, in any way, shape or form. You know, and um, and, and then they'll, 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 those of them who know us, you, you better know the attack is coming. And see, that's why it's so important, too. Saints, you need to learn. And you need to get it through your head now. And you need to learn how to cut the ties from your family, from your natural family. Because they are really not beneficial to you at this point. And some of you are entirely too close to them. You let them know too much about what's going on with you. I tried to explain to you... Um, and pastor does it all the time. The other elders, they do it as well. About, you know, the effects of it and how, you know, it can really not be good for you. And and I, I use myself as an example of my situation. But, you know, you really have to learn. And I know for a fact that some of you are having a difficult time letting go. But I'm telling you, you know what I mean? You better, you better get it now. You better... Suffer the heartache or whatever now. Die out to that junk now. Break those soul ties now. Because it's getting worse. Um, and they're not going to be there for you. But um, not to mention also, you know, this homosexual agenda and, and how it's running rampant. We see that as well. And it's just disgusting. It really is. And it is it's really don't even deserve any talk. But you can't help it because they... They're so outright in the open and in front, and, you know, they want you to know. They want you to see them, and they want to be respected. And they go to great lengths to um, gain that respect and their so-called rights. But it's just a sad day we're living in. And, um, but you, Saints of the Most High, you already know it. We have warning in our word and our and our, our, our scriptures. It shows us. It teaches us and tells us. The Messiah Himself even tells us. You know that um, that things are going to get bad, um, and no doubt they definitely are. All right, since so I'm gonna go to let's see Matthew. Matthew 24, quickly, just read something to you, all right? And this is uh, Messiah here speaking. His disciples, they ask, you know, Yeah, we are uh, Matthew 24. I'm going to start at verse 3 here. And it says, And he set up on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Look what he told them. He said, You take heed. That no man deceive you. So that was first and foremost. So you already knew the type of uh, deception that would be that would be to come. And as we have this written here for us in this time that we're in, same applies, you know. And it says, verse five: For many shall come in my name, saying, "I am Christ," and shall deceive many. You know, we know what that's all about. We know what deception is. A lot of us coming out of uh, the the, the, work, the wicked religions of this world and being deceived and even we see in this walk you got to tread very carefully there are many out there calling themselves teachers and uh, oh man prophets and bishops and the whole nine man self appointed they are but we have to watch out as well for, for deception verse 6 says and ye shall hear of war and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things 
must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we hearing of different wars and, and all types of things going all on, uh, um, going on all over the world. I didn't even mention all of the you know the different wars and fighting that, that's going on. It's really sickening, um, but it's 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 definitely happening. We could hear, but the thing that that Messiah said is this. He says, "But the end is yet, is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine." And pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. But this is the key. Verse 8 says, and all these are the beginnings of sorrows, you know. So we, we in the beginning stages of all of this stuff and um judging on what's going on in our time, we we can see, you know, it's getting ugly. Very, very quickly. I mean ugly. In that same uh chap uh, Matthew, we're gonna go to sixteen. Matthew 16, I'm going to start at verse 2. And he answered, this was, he was answering the, the, the Pharisees along with the Sadducees. And he answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather. For the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today. For the sky is red and lowering which is cloudy, and ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? And the question is to you, Israel, can you discern uh, the signs of the time? I, I heard Pastor just mentioned, mentioned it yesterday, you know, that you know we can feel it. We definitely can feel it, especially if you feel with the Ruach. No doubt about it, you can feel and, and tell that something's going on. Something just is not right. It's, it's, it's things are changing before us too rapidly. Also, you know, um, it's one thing af after the other. Wicked acts of of, of immorality, um, just um, you know, the the hatred all across this world, um, the the lawlessness. I mean, it's it's just it's just horrible. Um, you know, people, the law is really a curse word to them. You know, we were taught to despise the law. We were taught against the law. Um, you know, people today don't want to hear nothing about the law, no way, shape, or form. Actually, it's 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 a joke to them. It's it's funny to them. And so, you know, nobody wants to, to hear about this truth. You know, I, I was talking to one man, you know, he was trying to uh, be funny when I was working at, uh, in the city out there, and I was telling him, you know, I don't, you know, do Christmas and all of that, and he was, he was a little upset because he wanted to wish me a Merry Christmas and everything, and I was like, man, nah, uh, uh, so like, so well, you don't do holidays, well, what do you do? You know, he said it kind of smart, you know, trying to be flip. I said, well, what you know about Passover? You know, what you know about um, tabernacles? And that's what I do, and I knew he didn't know what I was talking about, so I just cut it short. But these people don't want to hear. They really don't. And and our laws have they mean nothing to them. All right, but Israel, the question was, can you tell the signs of the time? And and you know, I'm gonna go from there to uh Proverbs. Um and we hear what a wise man said. Wise man once once said which is real real prevalent unto us even in this time. Proverbs chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 24. And it says, When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. But listen to this in verse 25. It says, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of of the wicked when it cometh. All right? So we already know that it's prophesied, you know, the coming uh, destruction of the wicked. And we, we know that there are going to be events leading up to all of this. So we should not be afraid of sudden, sudden fear, neither of destruction 
you know, of, of the wicked. Um, we go from there, in that same chapter, I'm going to go to the beginning of it. And listen to this. This Proverbs chapter 3, starting in verse 1, and it says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace Shall they add to thee? You hear that, right? That's talking about the commandments. So they they should uh, add length unto your days and long life and peace. Shall they add to thee? And we need that peace. No no doubt about it. We need that peace, especially now. You know, we can still live in peace amongst a world that's full of chaos. And that peace is sweet unto us. That peace, we need to guard it with all diligence. Hallelujah. Because we need to stay sane and, and, and in this hour. Verse 3 says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Glory to the King. We know the law is the truth. And we should bind that law about thy neck, our necks, and write it upon the tables of our heart. So we are charged to know it. We are charged to, to, to live it and obey, obey it. Verse 4 says, so, thou, so shalt thou find favor and good comprehension in the sight of Yahweh and man. And it says, trust in Yahweh with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. You know, that's something that, you know, we need to really, really try our hardest to do. To trust in Yahweh. You know, all too often we, we, we try to uh, trust in, in ourselves, in, in our own knowledge, in, in, in the things in which we can produce. But, you know, it takes humility. It takes, you know, submission to turn it over to Yahweh, to trust in him. And everything that we do, you know, leaning on him for comprehension. And verse 6 says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And as you know, um, you know, we should make a habit of that as well. Always acknowledging the Father. Always, in, in everything that we do, you know, even the way you live, showing that, you know, if you live in righteous and you live in holy, it's showing that you acknowledge the Father. You know, you could be out on your job and working. You work it and you do it as if you are because you are doing it unto Yahweh, you know. You're representing him. And so that's ways in which you can acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. So you put your trust in him. And you acknowledge him, he's going to direct your paths. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So we, you know, we have all um, these writings, all these instructions, all these laws before us. And they all are for us. They're not against us in any way. And you know, they're not hard. Messiah even said it. He says, his, his, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He said, learn of me. So we, we have a lot before us, saints. We really do. And uh, a lot has been taught unto us. Um, but, saints, you know, you hear, uh, Pastor, you hear myself, the other elders, we always refer back to the law. I mean, I, I can't even imagine or think of one teaching, one preaching, or, you know, one talk, one study, anything where we don't mention the law. You know, it's, it's so important to us because that is our life. That's what's going to save us. And, you know, you really think about the law. You dwell on it. You meditate on it. And, you, you know, you get it in your heart. And you, you really e evaluate it and, and, and look at it. It's, it's really righteous. It really truly is. It's very righteous. And, and the good thing about it is it's not going to change, you know, to suit the times or to suit the situation. No. Y'all was not like that. So that's even more reason why you should embrace it and love it 
Because there's no other nation that has laws like this. All you have to do is step back and look out at what's going on in this world. Just this judicial system and how it changes so often and, and it's so unjust. It's just it's just literally a shame. Sometimes when I think about the different laws that were set up, you know, just against a certain certain people, a law set up against uh, for for the elite or the rich, and it's just it's awful. It really is. But we are people. We are righteous people that have righteous laws. What other nation is there that has this? You know, but nonetheless, we always refer back to the law, always. And we and I and I know for myself. I speak for myself. I have a great um greater passion and desire to love it and to learn it. You know, even King Dawid, he wrote. You know, it was in Psalms uh, 119. He wrote about, um, you know, help me to un uncover and unlock wondrous things out of thy law, you know, so that I may understand it or comprehend it better. You know, help me to grasp this thing. Help me to understand this and get this. Hallelujah. You know, one reason is because, uh, one reason, you know, we mentioned the law, as I mentioned already, you already know it's very important to us, it's our life. But because the mere fact that we were trained to despise it all our lives, and you know, you got to realize, man, what, sometimes without even doing it, you know, we are prone to uh, disobey or, or, or transgress. You know, we're not careful. And so that's why it's so good to reiterate it and so good to hear about it and hear it read before you. You know, because we lived all our lives in in uh, opposition to this law. You know, we were basically trained to 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 hate the father. And secondly, you know, I'm not fooled. I live in this this life. I live in this flesh, and I walk um, amongst this earth just as you all do. And I'm tempted, and I and I get it. I know it. And sin is 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 waiting. You know, a lot of times you may not even have it on your heart, but it's waiting. Satan has traps set up for you, devices and schemes and, you know, pleasures and things that you know that may entice you. And I'm not fooled by it, you know. And I know many of you, many of you true, real Israelites, you know, I know you don't make a habit of practicing uh, sin, you know. But there are some out there who do live in sin, some that call themselves Israel, that live in sin. This thing is real, you know, saints, and uh, I, I, I couldn't even sit here and lie to you and tell you that I'm not tempted. You know, things come my way. Uh, they may be different from what uh, come your way. But, you know, the thing about it is thinking about the law, thinking on the law and, and thinking on how, you no, know, if I do this, then this I'll be transgressing and then I'll be sinning against the father. And, and I don't want to do that. You know, saying to the most high, this thing is real. This is a real, a literal fight, a literal battle. You know, that's why we must contend. That's why we must fight just to stay in this thing. And I'm trying to speak to you, you know, just real, just true, speaking to you from the heart. Um, you know, and I even shared with you a while back. I didn't tell you what it was, but I told you that, you know, you know, Satan placed something in my path just for me. And I knew it. I saw it coming. And you, you would not believe, saints, the fight it's been. You know, just to uh, overcome this thing. And, and it's not that I wanted it. Not that I was even looking for it. Not that I, not at all. But when I set myself apart and I, and I, and I, I, I as I'm seeking the Father to grow in, in different areas, because I, I have a long way to go. I really do. No, no lying to you. And I'm a hard critic on myself. I really truly am because I want, I'm striving, saints, for perfection. But this thing, man, this thing was coming and this thing is, you know, really trying to get me to fall. I mean, presenting itself as as a delectable, just a um, something really to to uh, to behold or, or to uh, to have, and I, I refuse. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I'm telling you. I know this battle is real. I know this fight is is serious. But we got to love the law more than our flesh, than um, giving over to the pleasure. And a, and and a, and and this lust, and the reason why I think this is because this. Let me just be be frank with you. We don't have the time, and I, I say this all the time. But that's just how I feel. I feel like we don't have the time to be playing around with with with, with none of the devices of this world, none of the the uh, devices that the enemy might 
you know, put in our paths and on our way. It's just crunch time. You know, it's, we don't have to go through, uh, like Pastor calls the ceremonial cleansing. Thing. You don't want to get set back. Not in this time. You want to keep going forward. You know, from faith to faith, to glory to glory. Sure, will we fall and mess up and, and fall short? Absolutely, because we all are, are in this flesh and we are prone to sin. And there's not one that don't sin. So, but I want to just really, really get to your to your mind, saints, and your hearts, and really to encourage you, man, to really um, be diligent in fighting, be diligent in in, in this war, and take it seriously. You know, because uh, we just don't know. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know if we'll be here another year or two or three or four or five. You know, because that day in which that breath goes out of your body, I mean, that's the day that the king has come for you. And your judgment is sealed in that day. And so you be you be careful. You really do. And notice that sin only lasts. For a short time. It does. And you got to make up in your mind. Are you willing to, to enjoy the, the pleasure of, of this life and of sin for a season? Or or you got your mind hell bent on serving the Father? You know, and, and it says in the word that if you will flee. You know, you flee from this sense. Flee from this ungodliness. You know, the Father will make a way out for you. No doubt about it. You know, reject the devil, you know, and he'll flee from you. But, but saints, um, my intentions really are not to condemn no one. Not at all, not whatsoever, but instead to uplift you. And that's what my aim and purpose is, you know, um, just to uplift you in this most holy faith. And as I told you, you know, I'm, I'm in this thing too. I'm fighting too. But as uh, we hear a lot about the mind. We hear a lot about the mind, and a lot is um, placed on the mind. You know, that's where this battle, um, it starts. That's where it's fought, in the mind. And the way we can first overcome it is in the mind. Hallelujah. And so that's why a lot of emphasis is put on um, your mind and becoming more uh, strong stronger in your mind, you know, casting down all thoughts and imaginations and, and all these things that exalt itself above the word of Yah. But the mind, the mind, the mind. Glory to the King. You know, <clears throat> just yesterday, all right, yeah, you think about that. Pastor just mentioned and he said, you know, if you don't come out, you don't come out of these uh, cities, you don't come out of this bondage, you don't come out of Egypt, you don't come out you got to come out in your mind, too, first. If you don't come out physically, you're surrounded with all of this um, influence, and it's strong, you know, strong delusion all around you, and, and, and people that are, 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 are basically possessed. You don't come out. You're going to find yourself um, siding with them. You're going to find yourself rationalizing with them. You know, and, and eventually it's going to affect your thinking. You, so you, you have to uh, begin to actively make moves to come out. No doubt about it. So, you know, I'll use an example that I, I just went in a city. Just last week I had to go in the city. Uh, my mother-in-law came into town, and I had to go into Nashville to get her. And, uh, you know, just being in, in, in Nashville, just for that short period of time, and I'm I'm there and I'm watching my surroundings and watching what's going on around me. And it's obvious to me. I see so much, so much jumps out at me, you know, and it, it, it's clear. You know, you see children, you know, how they they they, um, they just run around crazy. I mean, these children are out off the hook, out the box these days. There's no uh, word such as home training. I mean, that's gone. They pretty much are telling their parents what to do, you know, and I and I I'm I'm just thankful and my wife she had a chance to see it as well. And she was just thanking me that, you know, being obedient unto the father, you know, getting uh the family, our family out of that, that, that type of situation. Because it's just it's just horrible, man. Um, all of the different things that I've seen and I, I pretty much was you know, I talk about it all the time and you all see it. You see the way this world is going. And um 
just just looking at you know and talking with my mother-in-law it just showed me really how bad off people are and how I mentioned earlier the people love lies and they they like to live lies and that if you present any truth to them it comes as a shock and it really does and it really um brings them down to reality in which they can't handle it you know they can't really deal with it you know think about this and I've seen this time and time again you know with people that profess God, as they say, you watch the way they live and, and, and you'll see that they can say it out of their mouths. And, you know, it's a sick thing because it's a certain way that it sounds. Every time they speak, it's like these cliches, it's like these little slogans. They all sound the same. You know, they're not scriptural based. You know, they, they derive from the, 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 the filth of their minds and they say these things, but yet you know good and well that they don't mean it or, or they don't believe it themselves. Because think about this. The very first time something happens with them, let's say they get sick or, you know, um, anything happens with their, in their body, they get nervous. Right off the bat, they get nervous and they, get, they, are, they become very, very scared and they are afraid by the smallest little things. But yet you just said, you know, these little nice, nice slogans, God got me or God, you know, he going to work it out for me. He got my back. How in the world he has your back and yet the little small things, you can't even deal with them? You got to watch that, man, because, I mean, they, they full of that. You know, uh, the way faith works the same, you know, fear works the same way as faith, you know. If you believe in that junk, then that, that's what it's going to be, and that's what's going to take precedence. But, man, people really don't have faith. They don't believe. You know, and you, Israel, you need to be careful, too. You know, just as the pastor mentioned to us, we need to start to test and try our own hearts so that we'll know what we'll, what, what, what we'll do in a time of adversity. So that you will know your heart. I guarantee you set yourself aside to and ask the Father to really um, show you. And have and, and uh, I used to pray for patience. I used to pray for, um, you know, that my faith would increase and things of that made measure. And you, you better believe he's going to put you to the test. If you really want to know, and what you should want to know. Because we all need to really know, and we really, we really need to draw nigh unto the Father, um, especially in these times, so, so we can really um, have him as our defense, have his word in our hearts. But uh, people don't really have faith out there in this world. Um, they're just a fearful people. I'm going to go real quickly, Saints, to back to the book of Matthew. Y'all doing all right out there this evening? Israel. Glory to the King. I know that you are and bless you. Go to Matthew chapter 8 and 23. And it says, And when he, speaking about Messiah, was entered into a ship. His disciples, they followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, save us. Save us, for we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye, why are ye so fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose, and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So right then and there, he, he rebuked them, and he called them out. And he said, why are y'all so fearful? Y'all don't even realize y'all don't know who y'all with? Come on, think about it. Think about it, Israel. Why are you so fearful? Why are you without faith? Don't you know that you that are filled with the Ruach, that the Father that is with you, his Spirit is with you, why are you so fearful? Do you so soon forget that he is with you? 
So don't be so 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 soon shaken, so soon fearful. And verse 27 says, um, But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Hallelujah. That's the type of uh, Elohim. That's the type of master. That's the type of um, sovereign that we serve. You know, there's no limits to, to his power. There's no limit to what he can do. And uh, especially of us, us that are, 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 are filled with the Ruah, you know, we um, build ourselves up in our most holy faith. You know, the Father will take care of us. He will take care of us, and, and, and we will be able to do uh, wondrous things. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind, um, saints. But, uh, saints, I'll go to a quick ministry break. Be right back with you. Um, and give me one second, saints. I'll tell you what I yeah, I'll go to a ministry break first. All right, listen up, please. Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying this particular broadcast that you're listening to right now. We really appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. We try to make sure we do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you'd like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr., 632 Highway 52, Bypass West. That's 632 Highway 52 Bypass West, PMB number 1, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688. 3025. You may leave a message there and be the Father's will. We will do whatever we can to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. And do please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom, the King is coming.
Martial law up in the streets, boy mm. Police on every corner, what's the need to creep for? Mm. Instead of being awake, these people sleeping more Civil unrest is turning into street wars Boy. Nation rising against nation, nation. Kingdom against kingdom. kingdom But be at peace, Israel peace. is the brink of our freedom Soon. These walking zombies ain't nothing but hope yeah. for these demons yeah. So I cast them out If they keep coming, yeah. I blast them out uh, Catching every bit of my 45 TV, radio, telling more lies Why? To leave your minds demoralized Why? Just to do their bidders whenever The beast and the whore, they in bed together And if you drinking number one Watch the spread of feathers yeah. And land her eagle on the minds of the people huh? uh-huh. Think that's bash? Wait till that last quarter Wait Until that new world order uh. yeah. Now when that drum starts to beat, beat That heart starts to sound boom. And Pharaoh commanding every knee to bow down yeah. Everybody's bowing down yeah. Only few are standing up what? And everybody's looking round They, they looking, looking like, like what, what the f- f- Hold up. So you mean to tell me I gotta bow myself to something that can't speak Can't see, can't hear, can't do nothing Yo, take me up to your king I tell him kiss my ass to his face How about that? How about that? You take me right when now Man, and now I'm starting to see that fire glow. I say it ain't hot enough. Heat it up a little bit more. Proper speech, they took it ass. So they tied me up with rope. Open up the furnace door. Threw me on the furnace floor. Body burning next to me. The rebels are consumed. And then I feel a sense of peace entering the room. I do not fear doom, no. I begin to stand, and as the shadow becomes the image, it's a son of man. He says, My firstborn, your faith has been measured. Now take a stand, just see the fire is gonna respect you. The God's about to come in, looking at his spectra. And when they call you forth, you tell them about the one who sent you young Hebrew boy. Step from out the furnace and tell us all about this Yahweh that you claim you learned of. Sure, in the last days, I hope you're able to stand. So repent for the kingdoms at hand, man. In the last days, I hope you're able to stand. So repent while you can. Israel. All right, thanks to the most high blessings to y'all. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears, thanks. I'm gonna go and um, you know, um, go this direction here <clears throat> and say this because there is definitely a, a lack, a lack of honor, a lack of respect in um in this time here in which we're in. I mean, it's all over the, all across the board, young to old. You know, nobody will submit, nobody will um, honor or uh, or give due benevolence. You know, and what I'm speaking of is this. You know, in this ministry, especially this ministry, we 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 see a lot. We deal with a lot of opposition, a lot of folk out there who speak against. Uh, this ministry for different reasons, all right. But you know, you look into the lives of these people, these individuals. You know, you don't see any, a, a lick of uh, uh, the ruah working in them, and it's obvious. You know, they can't perform none of the works. Uh, they they can't show us how to how to live this thing. It's all external. It's all by mouth. It's all by you know what, what, what um, things that they can. Produce things you can physically see, and the things that they can say, and so we we are uh, not about to be judged by these people, man. Not at all. These, um, but it's just you know when I think about it, it's just it's just it's just it's, 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 it's hardening to the heart. It's just these people will not submit. They will not respect and honor. And you know what I'm speaking about. You know, I look at this this latest guy, uh, Jetty. Jedediah Malek, and how he, uh, his disrespectfulness unto Pastor Dow, and Pastor pretty much brought this gentleman, pretty much was instrumental in him coming into, uh, to, to even, you know, out of darkness, I should say. But yet he turns around, and I even uh, see that he makes, you know, makes fun of, of, of different things that, like Pastor says. But this man, you know, goes to great lengths uh, to, to disrespect and dishonor. You know, our pastor, even though 
you know, you may not, um, you may disagree with something. That doesn't give you the right. And, you know, it's so sad because, see, people out, they, they, even the heathen, you know, they, they won't disrespect and, and dishonor, um, you know, uh, authorities. They, you know, they, they won't disrespect these Christian so-called preachers out there, you know, uh, they, they're they so-called elected officials. You know, they give them the utmost respect. And, but, I mean, the man of Yah, they, you know, these folks just straight out, outright disrespect. You know, and it's sad, you know, and then we get this other one, this Ron, Pastor Plumline, so-called. You know, he's just really been a pest. He's really been um, a nuisance and, and, and just, he, he needs to really uh, be dealt with, and he will be dealt with. And um, because not only did, you know, stirring up confusion with uh, Pastor Dow, you know, his wife, the elders, and now with, with the brethren, you know, just as recently, uh, Brother Steve and Sister Wenda, you know, happened to deal with, with, with the foolishness. And so it's just it's just a sad time we're living in. You know, nobody will respect, especially not, they won't even respect the hoary head, you know, none whatsoever. Um, they put themselves above Yah um, and, and try to judge Yahweh's men. And, and uh, it's just unacceptable. It really, truly is. You know, and um, we're seeing it more and more uh, taking place. But I tell you what, you know, the thing we need to do and, and be mindful of, too, is that is this battle in which we are um, in and this war that we are waging. It's, it's really not flesh. You know, this this really is a spiritual um, battle. You know, you all know this. You know, that we wrestle against, uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know, but against the principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness and not uh, against, and against spiritual wickedness in higher places. We already know where our, where the battle is. You know, we got to be more, uh, as, as, as saints, as true warriors in this thing, uh, we got to fight more against our enemies spiritually and and allow, allow y'all to deal with these people and, and to deal with them that their mouths be stopped you know because there's too much going on you know it's too much uh, you know they have the right too much freedom to speak against us and you need to say to be instrumental even the more so in reversing curses and do it on a daily basis any schemes any devices any prayers prayed against us um, anything in which will try to uh, hinder us or cause any snares or any type of confusion, havoc, you know, reverse all that stuff, you know, reverse it and return it back to the sender, you know, that they will eat the fruit of their own doings, you know, and it all will come back upon their own heads. Um, and so we got to really deal with, with, with this wickedness and, and really deal with it where, where, where the root of it, at the root of it. And, um, and we've got another thing we need to keep in mind, too, is that we're not exempt. We're not going to be exempt from uh, any type of persecution, being wrongfully accused of, of different things. You know, that comes with the territory. you got to prepare yourself for it, thanks, and, um, and know it's coming. And, and when you see it coming, you, you already know, just embrace it. You know, the, the Messiah himself had to deal with uh, opposition, persecution from, you know, from his enemies. And, and and those who even say that they were <laughs> Israel, you know, he had to deal with it from you know the most, and so we, we got to uh, prepare ourselves for that as well and engage truly engage in this battle, um, because as we can see, the enemy is not slowing down, not at all. You know, you think about it. If we were irrelevant as a ministry, there would not nothing, nothing would be no attention would be drawn uh, drawn our way. You know, we wouldn't receive any any type of uh, attention or none of that. So, you know, it, it's effective and uh, Satan doesn't like what we're doing and, and those who are uh, who are under his authority, they're acting out his will. So, we need to be mindful of that. I'm going to read to you um, something in Psalms real quick. Because uh, Dawid, he was a master man at praying against his at it against his enemies, no doubt about it. And we could definitely learn from him, the king in the Psalms here. It says, Psalms 5, verse 1, it says, 
<clears throat> a Psalm of Dawid. Give ear to my words, O Yahweh. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry. My King and my Elohim. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Yahweh. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And will look up. For thou art not an Elohim that had pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall thou e shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. Yahweh will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Yahweh, into thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O Yahweh. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Yahweh, will bless the righteous with favor. Will thou compass him as with a shield. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. So we can see how, how, how the king how he went after it. And he had many enemies, man. Many, many enemies all around him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Uh, let me read. I'll read a portion of. Uh, I'll go ahead and read another one. While we add it, Psalms 91. And it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, yes. I will say of Yahweh, He is my refuge and my fortress. My Yah. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made Yahweh which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. 
For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Hallelujah. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt thread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under, under feet. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. So, so I tell you, saints, we, 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 we can only win if we really just put our trust in the Father, if we are obedient servants, um, keep his commandments, keep his laws, keep him close to our hearts, keep him in our minds. We can um we cannot go wrong. All right. Uh, glory to the King. The Saints. Overall, just wanted to um put those on your mind. Uh, give you those words and just to to encourage you as we go on uh, throughout the week um, and and as we progress months as they go by and. Um, we just need to uh, really stay close to the Father, trust in Him, believe in Him, not become fearful um, because of the things that are coming, because um, we know they're coming, um, and we need to prepare for it, prepare for persecution, prepare um, for opposition from the enemy, and just prepare to, to really, shoot, it's, it's work here, it's work in order to, to enter into uh, the kingdom, and it's a very uh, straight gate. It truly is. But you can do it, Israel. We will do it because we, we win. And um, we will not be condemned. We will not be judged by you know these heathen, these, these wicked folk who uh, who say they, they are Yah, but you know, in action and in, in function, we, we see that they're not. We, um, we are the true seed. We are the heritage. Uh, we are Yah's people. And we need to... Uh, Act as such. Um, so I just want you to be encouraged, uh, saying to the Most High. Just be encouraged throughout the week. Um, I always tell you, go back and listen to the messages. Always, always go back and listen to the messages. There's so much in those those uh, messages from Sabbath that you know it, it, you'll catch it. I mean, certain certain things that you may miss during the service, you'll catch it at the replay. And, and as you really spend time with Father, and go over and study those those. Uh, the verses that, that Pastor gives us, that he uses, those references. Go back and, and really study them things. and um, Just just have a wonderful time in, in the Messiah and uh, build yourselves up in your most holy faith um, throughout the week. And I tell you, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Um, and we have a lot to look forward to, man. Thanks. We have the feast coming up. And as you all know, these feasts have yet to be fulfilled. And so we, we are waiting. We are going through with these uh, feasts and, and being obedient servants, but we really are seeking the Father. We really want Him to come more and more as we see uh, the wickedness of this day increase. We want to see the King. We want to be with our Father. We do. Um, I, I know I yearn for it because there has to be, and I know there is something better than, than, than what's here. We need to take our rightful places in the kingdom. And we need to be preparing ourselves. You know, really, truly using this time to analyze ourselves, to purge ourselves. I know it sounds redundant. I know it's, you know, continue to say that. But it, it takes effort. It really does take takes effort. You know, and a lot of times you need to just sit back and just be quiet. You know, allow the Father to speak. You know, you it might be something you you you're looking for. You're looking for answers for. Just be quiet sometimes. Stop thinking. Stop trying to have it all your way, and having it now. And and you know, just sit back, humble yourself a little bit, and seek the Master. Hallelujah. I want to read something else to you before I go. Um, I try to um, find some words of wisdom 
you know, that would be encouragement to you. Um, but I want to make this announcement first before I read that. And then um, because next week is actually you know, we're going to be in a feast. Um, as soon as we uh, pretty much leave one feast, we'll be entering into another one. As we leave the weekly Sabbath, then comes the um, the Feast of Trumpets. So there will not be any blog talk on, on next uh, first day. Um, this particular broadcast here will, will not uh, take place because we'll be in the Feast. But um, we'll continue the, the following week. All right. Um, so let's see. That's all I had. As far as announcements goes, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't think it was anything else. But just get yourselves prepared for that, for the feast. Um, get ready. And um, these are really uh, holy times and, and really uh, special times for us as Israel. You know, they should be special. They need to be special to you. They need to be near and dear to your heart. Um, so. Definitely um, looking forward to that. And then we have atonements coming up. And then right after atonements, we have tabernacles, which many of you will be here during that time. And uh, it's going to be a joyous uh, occasion. So bless y'all, saints. I pray that something said, you know, uh, edified you or encouraged your soul. I'm going to read something to you and uh, bid you farewell. And I'm going to read to you from Sirach, Book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus. In the 24th chapter here. 24 starting in 19. And it says, Come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me, and fill yourselves with my fruits. For my memorial is sweeter than honey, and mine inheritance than the honeycomb. They that eat me shall yet be hungry, and they that drink me shall yet be thirsty. He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded, and they that work by me shall not do amiss. Verse 23 says, All these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High Yah. Even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregation of Jacob. Faint not to be strong in Yahweh, that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him for Yahweh Almighty is Elohim alone, and besides him there is no other Savior. He filleth all things with his wisdom, as Hisham and Tigris, talking about those rivers, in the time of the new fruits. He maketh the Comprehension to abound like Euphrates and as Jordan in the time of harvest. He make it the doctrine of knowledge appear as the light and as Gion in the time of vintage. Verse 28 says, The first man knew her not perfectly. No more shall the last find her out. For her thoughts are more than the sea, and her counsels profounder than the great deep. I also came out as a brook from a river, and as a conduit into a garden. I said, I will water my best garden. And will water abundantly my garden bed. And lo, my brook became a river. And my river became a sea. And I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning. And will send forth her light after all. Afar off, excuse me. I will yet pour out doctrine as 
prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. Glory to the King. Bless you, saints. Uh, it's been beautiful here, fellowshipping with you. Glory to the King. Just continue to fight, continue to pray, saints, and war. Pray for one another, saints. Consider your brethren before yourself. Think of what you can do to be of help unto Israel. Bless you, saints, and uh, shalom, shalom. Saints, the King is coming. Hallelujah. Uh-oh, look at him looking.